It's finally time to create some Route 1 Pokemon. My name is Tam Valley Productions, and if you're new here, I'm creating the Arova region. This is the beta map for it. It's a fan-made Pokemon region based entirely on California, and I've designed a lot of the Pokemon for it, ranging from starters, fossils, regional forms, and more. If you haven't seen those, please go check those out. But anyway, today is the long-awaited introduction to the Route 1 encounters. You know, the standard normal type rodent and bird Pokemon that you find at the beginning of each game. Pretty simple, right? Well, I've actually struggled to make these designs more than any other in the region so far, because I wanted to find the perfect animal inspirations to encapsulate the spirit of California. After all, these will be some of the first Pokemon that we think of when we think of the Arova region. So let's pinpoint some iconic California animals and get going. First up, let's design the Route 1 Rodent. First, we should look at other Pokemon games' definition of Rodent to see what's up. If you look close enough, some of these Pokemon are not actually rodents in the true sense. We've got Zigzagoon, the Raccoon, and Sentret, the Ferret, for example. So you can see that we're working with loose definitions of the term rodent. Basically, we should be looking for a small, brownish, woodland creature that lives in California, and could easily be imagined as likely the first Pokemon that you'd find in the entire region due to its adaptability. So why don't we go with another species of weasel, just like Sentret and Ferret, and go with otters? Particularly sea otters are fairly iconic species of animals that live in California's coastal regions, but they actually live in more areas than you'd think. That's because there's two main species of otters in the state. There's river otters and there's sea otters. River otters might be a good place to start because we can make a small Route 1 Pokemon that would live by rivers in the mountainous inner part of the region, which I'm basing off of California's gold country. Then we could create an evolution that would be a sea otter, and it would migrate to the open ocean. I think that would work great. Introducing Atat, the river diver Pokemon. Atat are friendly Pokemon who call Orova's northern river systems home. They spend their entire youth near the water, where they learn to hunt for Magikarp and the currents. They're not yet versed in advanced swimming, though their paws are covered in a rubber-like substance that allows them to bob and float in the water if needed. As they grow and they eat more slimy fish Pokemon, they develop a thick oil coating that gives them insulation during the winter. So, Atat is a river otter, and I translated several key characteristics of those animals here. First, I wanted to show how this is foremost a plain normal type Pokemon, but it still has traits of a water type, which it will gain as a secondary typing when it evolves. It seems pretty fitting, and it's accurate to how real river otters work. So, let's meet its evolution. Introducing Autorrent, the river diver Pokemon. Upon evolution, Autorrent will migrate downriver and live and play in Arova's open bays and oceans. They dive to deep depths to catch prey like Staryu and Pincurchin, thanks to their rubbery flippers that allow them to swim swiftly and their razor-sharp fur that helps them to cut through water efficiently. Due to their cold-resistant fur, they were once hunted to the brink of extinction, but their numbers have rebounded and they're now a treasured symbol of Arova. So, just like other Route 1 normal type evolutions, there isn't much of an added gimmick to Autorrent besides an added typing of water. That's shown through its rubber flippers that it gains when it evolves to swim in the open ocean currents, just like a real sea otter. They also look like artificial diving fins or flippers, but that's about the only design gimmick I gave this guy visually. I wanted to emphasize its normalness and have it believably be a pretty ordinary Pokemon that you could find all throughout the Eurova region. Lastly, its emphasis on thick fur and water-resistant oil gives it a nice feral look, while also making reference to the fur trade, when sea otters were almost wiped out in California when Russian explorers kept catching them for their pelts. So that's a nice tie into California history as well. Overall, I hope you like Eurova's long-awaited Route 1 rodent. Next up, let's design the bird. So for the bird family, I want to, surprise, pick another bird, using one species for the whole line, so we'd start with a simple baby bird Pokemon and turn it into a fearsome giant bird by the end, for the traditional three-stage line that pretty much every bird family has been so far. So let's go ahead and pick California's state bird, the quail. Just like a lot of normal and flying bird Pokemon, there's not a whole lot of gimmicks to pull from with this line. But I also want to give it an added something so it's not just a generic bird of prey by the end. With quails, we have the plume that they have on their heads. That's a good place to start. First up, let's introduce Plume Puff, the Plume Quail Pokemon. Plume Puff are plentiful bird Pokemon that once inhabited solely Arova's eastern plains and woodlands, but it's adapted well to urban life. They're too plump to lift their bodies off the ground, but they'll burst into short flights when desperate to escape predators. They prefer to travel on foot alongside dirt roads and they'll pick up seeds left behind by farmers, bobbing their heads as they strut. Studies of this behavior indicate that they have an innate sense of rhythm. So Plume Puff is meant to look like a baby quail, like the fact that they can't really fly, and instead they prefer to strut on the ground. I made that unique 
by throwing in a large plume that could act as a metronome of sorts, bobbing back and forth as plume puffs strut. This helps the Pokemon keep rhythm. Maybe it would help them count steps to a beat as it walks, so it never gets lost. The plume music tie-in will continue with this Pokemon's evolutions. First, Plume Puff would evolve into Rockety, the Teen Quail Pokemon. Rockety are solitary Pokemon who saunter around at night mysteriously, trying to pick up fights with larger Pokemon to toughen up. They're very particular about the plume on their head, which they obsess over by constantly pruning and shaping. They prefer to hang out around small ponds, where they will have a reflection to check themselves out in. They sing songs to attract mates using their metronome, like Plume, to keep rhythm. So continuing with the music quail theme, Rockety is of course inspired by an angsty teen rocker, with its black hood kind of looking like a leather jacket, and its plume starting to curl like the pompadour haircut that many rockers like Elvis had in the 1950s and early 1960s. This gives a lot of character to this Pokemon, I think, who would be mainly angsty, vain, and finicky, and it fits well in a California-based region, due to that rock tie-in. I thought about giving this Pokemon a dark typing, but I think sticking with normal makes more sense, since Rockety is not outright evil, and it's more so just angsty as a bluff. Of course, Rockety will evolve one more time. Introducing Pomplumage, the big quail Pokemon. Pomplumage are fully matured and they've ditched their angsty natures in favor of a more outgoing one. In the wild, these Pokemon have found mates and they'll form small communities where they nest and protect young Plume Puff. They'll kick up dirt ferociously to protect their young against predators and they love to entertain anyone who listens by singing songs. Their music can put foes to sleep with lullabies or it can disorient them with shrill cries. So these Pokemon ditched the angstiness of their second stage and they fully mature into outgoing musician birds. Pomplumage fully embraced the pompadour aesthetic that I was going for with the giant head plume, and I also made the patterns on its wings look somewhat like a music note, while also being a reference to the actual patterns of quails, including the black markings on its face. Overall, I hope I was able to create a low-key bird evolution line that you'd find as the main Route 1 bird family, while also adding a cool cultural tie-in for them with a fair amount of personality. Now that we've created the textbook Route 1 rodents and birds, with the bugs in another video I made two months ago, Let's showcase just a few more random additions that you'd find on Arova's early roots as we wrap this video up. I want to highlight another type of Pokemon that you could find in the early roots of each Pokemon game. You can always find a normal or dark type evolution family of non-rodent animals. Usually a two-stage line that can be found in the early mid-game as a common encounter. So let's pick one more mammal from California and make a nice normal type evolution line to fill out the Pokedex a bit more and give some variety to Arova's Route 1. I want to make a Pokemon evolution family based on the pronghorns. These are commonly known as antelopes, and they can be found pretty much all across the western United States. Though they're not actually antelopes in the true sense, they are actually more closely related to giraffes than they are to deer, elk, or moose. I also like how they're the fastest land animals in North America, and they're also cool looking with those weird horns. So why don't we give a Pokemon family that reflects that speed? by creating a normal type antelope that evolves into a normal electric type. We could also make this a two-stage split evolution and create a fire type version to fill out a type that we desperately need more of in the Arova region. So let's create a powerful fire type male version with longer horns like flamethrowers and a speedy electric type and a speedy electric type female version with shorter horns like electric prongs. Introducing Kofan, the tiny horn Pokemon. Kofan are timid Pokemon that live in Arova's plains and valleys. They live in herds with their parent Pokemon who protect them from danger, as Kofan are relatively defenseless. Their only true strength is their speed, which can top 40 miles per hour mere days after their birth. As such, they prefer to run from danger, unless they truly bond with a trainer who teaches them how to fight. Their small horns help them to sense danger and they can heat up and emit tiny jolts of electricity. So I kept it relatively simple with this Pokemon making a cute normal type with tiny horns. I think these horns would be able to store kinetic energy and redirect it as a small attack. Not yet fire or electric. What it would evolve into would be determined by its gender, which would have a 50-50 split in the wild. Overall, I love how this one turned out, both in its face and its colors. It looks cute without being too plain, just like other early root Pokemon like Lillipup or Shinx. So let's meet the male version of Kofan. Introducing Galapash, the antelope buck Pokemon. Galapash are fierce protectors of their family herds and they'll travel great distances to gather berries to bring back. They've adapted to volcanic conditions by gaining a fire typing. 
Thus, their long horns often glow bright red in the heat up when they're angry or sparring other males for dominance. They also generate heat kinetically, which they can redirect into attacks. Galapash tracks are easy to spot, since they instantly leave burn marks in the grass. Like I said, these Pokemon would be male only, meant to look like a typical buck, meaning the male version of many hooved animals with typically larger horns or antlers. I made its pronged horns very long, and I gave it a cool mane made of ash and smoke. I think these Pokemon would be found in the northern volcanic area of Verova, along with ordinary plains and valleys all across the region. Hopefully its colors look natural while also showcasing its fire typing, a type that's been hard for me to come up with Pokemon for some reason. So let me know what other fire types you want to see in Verova. Anyway, let's meet the female version of the Kofan family. Introducing Thundeer, the antelope doe Pokemon. Thundeer are gentler counterparts to Galapash, preferring to stay close by and protect their young Kofan, but studies have shown that they're more powerful than their male counterparts. Thundeer generate electricity between their two short horns, which can absorb and redirect incredible amounts of lightning at foes when necessary. They produce a static shock when touched due to similar kinetic processes that make their bodies incredibly charged up. So for Thundeer, I really leaned into the uniqueness of the pronghorn shorter slanted horns, which remind me of electrical prongs. I think that could be a great source of powerful electric generation, but these Pokemon, just like Gallopish, are still primarily normal types, and they could be found virtually all across the region. I hope you like this evolution line, which reflects an animal that's iconic to the American West and more unique than many people give them credit for. Finally, I want to showcase one more Pokemon that I finally designed and would be an encounter on Route 1. Here's Rovian Bonsley, the pre-evolution to a Rovian Sudowoodo, which I made over a year ago. I just needed to make the art for this Bonsley variant, which would be a pure grass type. Basically, these Bonsley would be imported from Sinnoh and Johto, and they'd lose their rock type in favor of actual growth of redwood bark and pine cones on their bodies, since they would inhabit the northern forests of Rova and the early routes, like Route 1, which would be full of this alpine terrain. So, as you'll see in the story video coming in a few months, a Rovian Bonsley will have a fairly big role to play in the early game, and it'll be the first regional variant that you'll find. I also want to give a brief teaser for Arova's first gym leader, the grass-type park ranger, Connie, who would have an Arovian Sudowoodo as her ace. Of course, the gym leader video is still a work in progress, but we're getting ever closer to that now that we have over 50 designs for the Arova region. Once we round out the decks with about 100 to 110 new Pokemon, I'll finally release videos that I've been working on over the game's story, gym leaders, region map, encounters, and more. So stay tuned for that, and please watch the whole series so you know each and every Pokemon that you can find on your journeys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time for more content.